wasn't planning to make the video. I was doing a bit of shop time on my own, roughing out some bowls. And I started with this one here. And then I decided, I says, like, I should do a video of it because this is a pile of beach that I have in about five years and it wasn't spalted. I covered it up and left it alone, thrown a load of spalted shavings on top of it. And I said, I'll see what had happened. So I roughed out this half of this here and I discovered it's had to go on spalting all the way through. Now two years ago when I took the cover off this, I took a piece over and it wasn't spoiled, it was still pink. So it looks like it's ready to be torn up, put on the lathe. So I'm just going to do a, a video here of roughing out ball banks. And I'll cut up a few pieces of this and throw it on the lathe and let's see what I can get out of it. Because it's... Not to say in this, it's a lovely bit of timber, nice and solid. It's not punky. It's just right for toning now before it gets too too punky. Okay. What I have here is this big, well this lump of beach here and it's completely off balance, it's just an off cut off of one of the blanks that I cut outside and the reason I'm going to attack this one first is just to show you the tool technique to remove wood from this, nice and easy even though it's completely out of shape and not cut in the circle on the band saw. Now I'm going to be using a 5 8 uh, bow gouge and it's the Ellsworth signature bow gouge. Now his technique for using it is completely different to the rules of using a traditional bow gouge. Okay, So I'm going to be using his technique and I'm going to show you his technique and how it works. It works really nice, but you have to understand it. It's completely different to the, the traditional. Okay, so I'm going to take you through the cuff cuts that are used from a roughing cut for the beginning to rough the ball out and how to hold the tool, and then. They'll be taking you on through the slicing cut for shaping the bowl on the outside. Okay, so th them two steps is what I'm going to do first. Okay, now the way to hold this tool is first of all get your tool rest in and have it at a 45 degree angle to the wood 
at that angle there. Don't start cutting at the end here because that's end grain. Don't forget they're all fibres that are sticking out that way. So if you're cutting any wood at all, cut across the fibres. Don't go in at the end. Right? The way you hold this tool is dead straight. Right hand on the end of it, left hand over it. The tool is tilted at a 45 de degree angle. And don't keep it down, because if you do keep it down, that's a slice and cut. And it's only just keep pushing back in here. But with this way, when the wood hits that, it is pushing down on it. Like it's not going to be on the. You're not going to be doing any of the work. The, the tool is going to take the full force of that wood coming down onto it, directly down onto it. Whereas if you have it that way, the tool is going to get pushed back. Okay, and the finish off of this cut is just absolutely in, in, in bits. You're basically just roughing the ball. Get it into a cylinder so you can use the next cut on it which is the slicing cut okay now you can use this as a pull cut towards it or you can get behind it and use your other hand which I prefer and push it away from you pushing it away from you is pushing it that way and pushing the shavings completely out of your face doing it this way okay the shavings are going to come back and just hit you pile up there on your right arm but I'd be fair to use it the other way but I'm going to use it the way that he uses it which is right hand over there left hand on the end of the chisel right out, it's like a lever and pull it through on the cut you're just using the very tip of the, of the tool the, the tip, just right on the tip, not the nose of the tool just the tip on the side on the 45 I'm just using that part there to so start off this piece now it's completely all over the place out of shape you luckily you'd say it'd be very hard to make that into a cylinder just get it up to a nice speed not too fast just that the speed the lathe isn't jumping around the place and take the cut nice and easy stop there I'm going to move my tool rest in keep your tool rest as close as possible and you see the cut off of that it's not a finishing cut it's just roughing a roughing cut Now I'll just stop it there and show you what's happening here. The tool is right like there and the forces are being put down on the tool. See the way it's going down on the tool. Whereas if it was like that, it'd be pushing. It'd be, you'd be getting peeling the cuts. But it's pushing that tool away because it's out of balance. Okay. Same again. Don't force the tool into the cut, just let the tool do the, do the work. The wood is going to come down, hit that tool and cut it. Don't go push it. If it starts bouncing off the tool, like bang, 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 move back and go slowly again. And don't 
pull it real fast. Let it finish its cutting before you keep it moving. You'll feel it cutting. Let it finish, keep it moving it nice and slow. Don't go in real fast because it'll just go bounce, 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 bounce. Okay. You get a bit more speed now. Nearly there now, just a bit more. Move in the tool rest. Now we have a look at that. At this stage you can actually move the bowl around if you need to. Try and get a bit more water out of it. I can pull it back a bit this way. Because it's short on this side and long on this side. So I can pull this bowl back now. What I can do is adjust it once more. Because it's still in the ruffle process. That'll get me a bit more wood. I can take more off of this side and less off of this side. Tighten it down. Lock it in, check the two wrists. Take another cut now and make it into round once more, the working cut. Okay, I have a roughed into a cylinder that way. Now I can pull my tool rest around and I'm going to take the base of the bowl, get it ready for putting, putting the chuck on it. Put a tenant on the end of it. And I'm going to use a different cup. The same again, 45 degrees. And this is slice and cut. Hold the tool down at around 30 degrees and pull it towards you. Okay. That's good enough for that. Now we're going to start shaping the bowl itself now with a slice of cup, bringing it around into a nice curve ready for a tenon. Now this cut is the same again, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. The tool is around 20 degrees to 40 degrees down over the angle. It's using the very, the very tip of the tool. The more you go in there, the more of a cut you're going to do. But start off with the tip.
scrape and cut. Just basically hold the tool down straight using the side of the tool just there like the scraper. And flatten up the channel. Pick up the cut now and make it make a spigot. Don't bother going near the face of the bowl now. Just leave it alone, that's it. It's roughed into shape on the outside. If you're going to be mass producing these, you have to be as quick as possible. So that's just a roughed shape bowl there from that. Okay, when you reverse it, you'll be able to shape the, the face of it more easier. There's no point in starting to go around that side. Throw that to one side, put the next one on. Get it going. Next one on, the same again. Okay. 